started Make Life Fun podcast because I needed more fun in my life. When I became a mother, I, for some reason, just put on this like high ponytail, mom jeans, and nose to the ground. I wasn't having fun. It wasn't until I started having fun that it started becoming easy. Fun and mental health go hand in hand for me. I've been in this mental health game my whole life. <laughs> and I am so lit up to like help other people. I'm so lit up for other people to experience this because it's what my wish and my mission is for every woman is to find safety within themselves because it took me a long time to get here. Mm, Welcome back to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so happy that you're here. Today on the show, we have Masako Kazawa with us, and I am just stoked to have her here. So welcome. Thank you so much, Josie, for having me. Yes. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Japanese. I was born and raised in Japan. About half of my life, I lived there. And when I turned 21, I came to the United States to be an exchange student at Northern Michigan University in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So since then, I transferred from a college I was attending in Japan and finished my degree at Northern Michigan. And ever since then, I have stayed in the States for, it's been more than 20 years now. Yes, so what were you studying? Originally, when I was a little child, I loved drawing. I was very much into visual art and I loved drawing and I I thought that was the career that I was going to pursue. I was always drawing in my room and my parents thought that I was studying for the whole time. (laughs) One day they found out and they found a stack of like notebooks and realized that I was just using those notebooks for drawing like cartoon characters and stuff. (laughs) They are very like traditional in terms of education and they felt like art was not a very valid way to build a career. And they said, instead of drawing, why don't you just study hard? and get good grades, go into good schools and like get a stable career, like teacher, school teachers. (laughs) And I was very obedient as a child. I am a middle child. I have an older sister and a younger brother. My older sister is very different from me. And she was always the one who was doing what she wanted to do and then got into trouble in front of my eyes. And I kind of saw what I shouldn't do. If I did something, then, okay, this is what's going to happen to me. So I kind of avoided what she did. (laughs) But I always like respected her for doing things she wanted to do. And then I didn't have the guts and I wanted to have an approval from my parents. And so I kind of stopped pursuing the art path and focused on, you know, getting into good high school, good college, all of that. And then my family always traveled since I was nine years old. My dad was self-employed and my entire family, so five of us, my parents, my older sister, and the younger brother, we would fly from Japan and travel through the United States and sometimes through Canada for like a month every year. So like entire month of August. We would just fly out here and we'll take road trips. That really impacted my view of life. I was able to like see how life could be outside of the small country of Japan. Then I developed a desire to speak English or like another foreign language and live in a foreign country and see what it's like to live in, you know, somewhere I've never really known. Since I was such an obedient child, I also couldn't see myself doing what I wanted to do without leaving my parents' supervision. Like I always wanted to make sure that I'm following their vision of how my life should be. That's how I ended up leaving the country. I didn't have to leave the country, (laughs) so to speak. I just, you know, felt like I needed to leave the home from my parents' umbrella. They are very protective. And I kind of grew up in a greenhouse. Like I was, I had a very protected childhood and I felt like I was not able to venture out and challenge myself or try something for myself outside of my parents' guidance. I wanted to 
experience other culture. And also at that time period in Japanese culture, working as a flight attendant was such a prestigious job for a young woman. Like you get to travel. And sometimes it required a foreign language skills. So I felt like, oh, that would be cool for me to pursue. So originally, when I came to the US, I wanted to pursue that flight attendant career. And then I majored in speech communication at college. I did really well in college. I worked so hard in college. My English was not that good at that time. And I just, you know, jumped into taking college classes. And I used to bring a small tape recorder into each class and record lectures. And I would re listen to the lecture when I went back to my dorm room. And <laughs> I would just talk to my professor after each class to make sure that I got the homework right. I just did not understand. I probably only. Understood like 50% of the conversation that was happening in the classroom. <laughs> We worked hard and I got good grades. And my college advisor, I was having a conversation with him one day and I was telling him, you know, I really want to become a flight attendant. And that's why I am majoring speech communication. And, you know, and he was like, why do you want to become? A flight attendant. Why don't you like you? You've got great grades, and why don't you like go to graduate school or something? So that was like a cultural difference, you know, in the United States. The occupation of flight attendant is not considered as prestigious as it is considered in some other countries. So, yeah, I kind of listened to his advice and then went into graduate school. Gosh, that story is so amazing. That is so brave. Like that was the word that kept coming through my mind is like, wow, that was so brave of you to be like, I was such an obedient child that I was under my parents' umbrella protection. And、mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted something different for myself. And I just was going to be brave and take a leap of faith. Yeah. I never really considered myself brave, but I, like some people have told me that. And I realized maybe I am not sure.、Mm -hmm. I mean, I was. Scared of the unknown each step, but I couldn't picture myself living the life that was kind of in front of me, like unknown. Everything is kind of expected, and you can see yourself like 10 years from now, 20 years from now, living in that, probably in this kind of setting, doing this kind of work. It was very predetermined, and I felt very. Uncomfortable seeing myself in that way. Yeah, that's beautiful. And it took so much courage. Even if you don't feel brave, that little you inside of you that was doing the drawings and like、yeah. that little person was like that fire, right? The fire inside、yeah. that was like kind of pushing you forward. Yeah. So after graduate school, like what did you start doing and where are you now from that <laughs> journey? Yeah. There's so much to like in, in between. Yeah.、Um, So, I got married between undergraduate school and then graduate school. We got married a week after the college graduation.、Oh, wow. And like I was like 23 at that time. I never had a desire to get married at that age, but either way, it happened. And but the marriage was very challenging. We stayed together for 12 years, but Like, we were both really young. We didn't have enough self awareness or awareness of anything at that age. And I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I wanted in my life. And I felt like looking back, I could see the way I decided to get married and accept that proposal was because I was afraid. I was afraid if I didn't say yes to this proposal, would I ever meet anybody who would love me as much? And the decision was made out of fear rather than out of love or desire. At that age, I, had, I didn't have the tools to go through those emotions and understand why I was feeling that way. I felt like everybody, you know, like everybody would feel uncomfortable and then unsure when they're making this type of life, big life changes and decisions. Yeah. So you were so young when you got married. 23、yeah. is so young. Like you said, we're just starting to discover what it is that even. Makes us tick, like what、yeah. it is that even makes us like who, like you were saying, who who am I at 23? Yeah, like so that's a, was a big decision that you made. It was, it was, and then 
looking back, that was the hardest thing, hardest, most challenging experience that、mm. I had. There was a lot of addiction in my ex husband's life. Also, it kind of developed into an abusive situation. And I just did not, like, I kind of lost myself in, in that relationship. And I have felt like I was kind of trapped. And I didn't have like guts to like leave for so many years. And yeah, basically, I did not know who I was and, and what I was capable of and what I could do. The example of marriage, like my parents are married, still married, you know, and then they're happy together. I had that example, but that does not mean that could like have applied to my situation because it was in a different generation. <laughs> Different culture. Everything is different. I just could not use that as like a navigation to handle my marriage. We came to like a point of like, oh,、well, we should just, you know, call it quit. We should just get separated. Like we, we went to that point like so many times throughout that 12 year period. But I just did not know why I was in that situation. And I felt like if I did not know why I was in that situation, I'll probably repeat the same thing with somebody else. And I didn't want to do that. And I felt like I couldn't leave until I figured that part out. What was that journey? Like, wow. Oh my gosh. Like, what was that journey of getting that, again, bravery? <laughs> like, oh my, bravery <laughs> keeps coming up for me for you. Like, you are just such a brave soul. Thank、that、you. Is- I guess I was trying to like, figure out why the marriage was not working, why the relationship was not working. I just kept searching for the answer. <laughs> I couldn't find the answer. And so I had to keep searching. And that's how I stayed in a relationship for such a long time. But it came to a point that I finally woke up. I felt like I was asleep until then. But I finally woke up. Somebody in my life woke me up unintentionally.、Mm. It was just a beautiful soul who reminded me, again, unintentionally,、mm. reminded me of. Who I am internally that I have forgotten. I really lost myself, my sense of self throughout the marriage in, the, in a relationship. I felt so empty for such a long time. And I didn't know who I was anymore. At age 23, the person that I was, I really forgot. And I was like just a piece of body, like living everyday life. I was living, but I was dead inside. I was reminded of that. From there, I knew I had to leave the marriage and I was scared. I invested so many of my years into that relationship. And we had a daughter. She was like one and a half or two years old at that time. And the rest of my family lives in Japan. I'm like the only person in this country. And I felt like so helpless. And yeah, it was like one of the like, darkest moments. Of my life. As you're telling this story, I'm just literally like filled with goosebumps. Like, wow. Like, thank God for that, so- that beautiful soul、yes. that was able to wake you up and see, like, you are brave, you are strong, you are powerful. Like, you have that power. Even being awoken and being woken up, I'm sure that next step that you had to take was just, just as hard. Yeah. I almost had to be like pushed out. Of that situation. Like that has been kind of a pattern of my life. Looking back, I know that I have to leave this situation, whatever that is, but I would wait until it becomes unmanageable. And that by that point, I know I've tried everything I, had, I could. I know that I,、uh, I don't want this anymore, no matter what. <laughs> I don't know the next step, but this is not it.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, Almost forced to jump off the cliff. I can so relate. And I know there's so many mamas listening to this that can so relate. I think as women, we want to fix and we、yeah. want to mend and we、yeah. want to make it work and we hold on so tight. Yeah. And we try so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Like I abandoned myself in order to keep the relationship going. I didn't know that I was abandoning myself in the process, though. It was only after doing it for so many years, like I realized, oh my gosh, I don't know who I am anymore. <laughs>
And I felt so empty, like in from the outside perspective, we had a very cute family, right? He, you know, he and me and then our little, like very beautiful daughter. And we looked happy from the outside, but I felt so fake. And once you, I realized I was being like lying to everybody. Well, first of all, to myself. And then that meant I was lying to everybody else too. And then once I realized that, I just could not live in that way anymore. So much power to you for, even though you, like you were saying, like you were holding on so tight, you, yeah. there was that moment that, like you said, pushed you, forced you to like awoke it and take that next step. So yeah. how did you even start to maneuver that? I am not sure. I wish I could say like, I had like a strong faith that things would work out. But I don't even think that I had it at that point. <laughs> I just knew like I couldn't live like that anymore. So I had to like leave that behind. It, I was in the survival mode more than anything. I talked to my parents about it after I made the decision to leave the marriage. I never said anything to anybody about any of the struggles that I was going through in the marriage for the 12 years. Nobody knew anything about it. We've gone through counseling sessions here and there. So that was that. But nobody in my life, except for those counselors, knew what was happening, what was going on. And by the time I told my parents, I already made the decision to leave the marriage behind. And it was a news to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they thought everything was going fine. But I felt like, you know, they live so far away from me. And if I said anything, if I shared any, like, struggles that I was having, I thought they would just say, like, why don't you just come home? You don't have to do that. We're here. You can just come back, come home and live your life with us and everything will be fine. After I decided to leave the marriage, I thought about like, what would be like if I just left and lived with my family? That gave me like a little sense of comfort, but also like a sense of like, again, like being under my parents' protection and umbrella and shelter and not living my life my own way. Mm -hmm. And that felt like very limited, disempowered. I didn't like that. So I did not take the route. From there, I started like kind of building myself up. Like I hit the rock bottom, so to speak. I mean, the divorce process is painful. It takes up so much mental, emotional physical energy to go through that no matter what you know circumstances and our daughter was young at that time she was only two and I was at that time a primary caretaker and I was working full-time and more than full-time because my job was at that time very demanding so doing that kind of lifestyle for enough amount of time I really lost my health everything like fell you know sort falling apart like I was already mentally emotionally not well but I didn't really notice it until my health crumbled down because then I had to pay attention mm -hmm. so from there I started doing like things to improve my health and I didn't know where to start so I just randomly like implementing things I did research you know what type of diet I should have and Maybe exercise would be the key and maybe like I should listen to this kind of thing and like all those like different life hacks, you know, mm -hmm. meditation was one of the tools, one of the things I tried along with a whole bunch of things. And after doing that meditation for a while, I started noticing that I was able to observe my thoughts and I realized I could change my thoughts mm -hmm. and that could change my emotion and my behavior and that was a game changer that was a bigger change than just eating certain food or exercising i started noticing like improvement in my life i was feeling better in general and then me feeling better changed everything else around me everything that i was perceiving was different what a journey what a journey wow Thank you so much for sharing that heartwarming story with us and showing us your heart in that journey. Like, thank you so much for like opening up and being vulnerable enough to like share that with us. That's 
the first thing that's on my heart to say to you. And I would love for you to tell us a little bit more about your meditation and how that has impacted you. Because like you said, you were able then to start catching your thoughts and be more aware and knowing that you have some power, you have some control. Like yeah. the one thing you can take back is that what's going through your mind. Yeah. So yes, please tell us more about that. So I didn't have any prior knowledge or experience in meditation. So when I first started, the reason why I started was while I was researching on a lot of life hacks, the people who were talking about it had some sort of mindfulness exercise that they were following. So I thought, there yeah, no, must be something there. So I just did not know how to do it. I just searched on YouTube, you know, guided meditation and then found the ones I liked and started listening to it. I didn't know if I was doing it right or anything. Why not? What do I have to lose? I've already like, I'm, I've already hit the rock bottom and I can only go up and then meditation seems a little like out there, but a lot of people were like swearing by it. And why not? It costs nothing. It's free. There's no investment. I can do it anywhere, anytime. And if there are really benefits, like some people are talking about, then yeah, sure. I want that too. So I, yeah, I started really doing it every day and I started, you know, observing my thoughts and that made me more curious. Like maybe there's more to it. One of the uh, big turning points was reading a book by Dr. Joe Dispenza called Becoming Supernatural. And in his book, he has all the scientific data to prove what meditation is doing to your brain and your heart. So I was in the academic world and I believed in research and I was in legal industry, working in legal industry. So I valued the, the research and studies and collecting data, all of those things. And so that, that, that his book really solidified my belief in meditation. It was not just so-called spiritual people running barefoot on the field, wearing the uh, floaty, you know, clothing. <laughs> <laughs> that, because that was my image of meditation before that. And I couldn't relate. I was in corporate, you know. <laughs> so yes, that was like one of the turning points. And then I started going to yoga and meditation studio in downtown Chicago. That was like right behind of my office building at that time. And so I would just go take classes sometimes. And then I found out that they were offering teacher training. By that time, I was sold, you know, yes, this must be it. I didn't have a desire to teach or facilitate meditation. I just wanted to learn more and deepen my own practice. So I signed up for the training and that was like a three, three months training and I learned a bunch and yeah, that was two years ago. Since then, I actually left the, the legal industry. That was a few months ago. That, that again, that situation too, I knew I was doing well. I was valued. I was doing such a great job. If you know anybody who worked with me will tell you that. <laughs> but I felt very unfulfilled. I knew that was not the place for me in the long term. But I waited. I, I couldn't leave. I, I had so much loyalty toward the people that I worked with. I didn't have the guts to leave. So what happened? They let me go. Again, I had to like, I see this pattern over and over. I know this is not my place, but I cannot leave yet. And then something happens and I'm just spit it out. And that was one of those like divine interventions. And I'm so thankful that happened. Otherwise, I, I couldn't have left. And it was sad to some extent, but I knew that had to happen for me to take the next step to really live my life in a way that I want to so that I can make the impact whatever that impact is I'm still like discovering what the impact could be but I am ready to discover until I left the the legal industry my 90% of my daily like 
mental effort was going into that job. And I didn't have much more extra bandwidth to do anything else, anything that I fully believed in. So, yeah. What a journey with meditation, yeah. even like <laughs> the fact that you were like, I just wanted to deepen my practice. So I'm yeah. just going to take this course and yeah. take this training and yeah. see where it leads me. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So now I love that you were talking about meditation. So I would love for you to tell us about the work that you're doing now with that. Why not meditate? <laughs> <laughs> this happened like around the same time when I was considering the possibility of leaving the legal industry all behind. And I took the class through Kathy Heller. I was looking for a business coach for a few years and I could not really find the one I really clicked with. I wanted a business coach who can not only teach me the business aspect, but who was also like spiritually connected. That combination was very important to me. So when she was doing the five-day challenge, I signed up. I was still working at Law Firm at that time. I had no intention of doing a podcast. I loved listening to podcasts, but I never thought of doing it myself. But through the five-day challenge, I was like, well, why not learn how to do a podcast? I'll probably learn other things along the way, and it might come in handy in my life. <laughs> So, and I was also so excited about finding the business coach finally. So I was ready to pick her as a mentor. And so I enrolled in her podcasting class. And then it really forced me to dig deep and then ask myself, like, what is the message that I want to tell people? It's not like I had this meditation as a theme of my podcast when I signed up, but I just looked back up my life. And if I'm going to leave any message, what would that be? And how can I help the people who are going through stressful life situations or anything that I might have gone through? You know, like we all go through life. Life will give you some like hard situations and then teach you things. And, you know, it's nice to have a tool to navigate with. And so like through, through the course, I, the message that I wanted to share was the meditation, how that could help you, how that could impact your life. And because that was the biggest game changer in my life so far, I thought, yeah, like I should tell people about this. I would like to, and there must be like other people who, whose lives have been impacted by meditation too. And I had Working out the low firm situation, I had a lot of coworkers who were burnt out, stressed out, and did not know how to reduce the stress in a healthy way. I thought like, if I had the voice then, and if they could use that voice, then I am doing something good for the collective. So that's how my podcast came to a birth, Why Not Meditate?, because I felt like whenever I talk to my friends or acquaintances, like meditation is great, you should do it. I get the same set of questions or comments from them. Like, oh yeah, I've heard of it. You know, like I hear it's great, but you know, I cannot sit still. I don't know if I'm doing it right. And I'm not like hundred percent sold on the idea because <laughs> it's invisible. You know, you cannot really see and touch and then, it's difficult to believe the benefits when you don't really experience it with your own life. And so I wanted to kind of remove the block, those blocks that people have and invite them to really just start, start anywhere and then see where that goes. And it, it could be wonderful. It could be a life-changing experience, but you would not know unless you tried it. So that's how my podcast, Why Not Meditate? came to an existence. I'm Japanese. I grew up in Japan and English is definitely my second language. So there was a lot of, I feel like, who am I to do a podcast in my second language? I had a lot of uh, resistance toward that. But at the same time, I'm like, if I did the podcast in Japanese, it might be a little more comfortable for me, but I would not reach as many people. There are definitely more English speakers in the world 
So I, I thought, yeah, just why not? Who cares what other people think? If I am happy with what I'm doing, and if I could like even touch one person's life, then it's better than not doing it. Oh, again, bravery. <laughs> I'm just going to keep telling you, you are brave. You are brave. You are brave. You take brave, bold action and it is admirable. And it is so inspiring. Thank you. It is so inspiring and you are so very welcome. And I would love to take a moment to talk a little bit about how that journey has affected your relationship with you and your daughter just a little bit. Mm, That's a beautiful question. The whole reason why I started researching on how to improve my physical, mental, emotional aspects was so that I could become a better mom. I was exhausted and I was empty and I was not being the type of mom I wanted to be to my daughter. So that's how my like health journey started to begin with. Nowadays, I am more present. I am a little more here and now rather than thinking in my like being always in my head thinking okay this has to happen we have to do this and this and this because I could go to that place too and then I am missing all the the moments that are in front of my eyes like your mom you know this they the kids grow up so fast I mean we are aging at the same speed too but we don't notice it as much but if you have a little child in front of your eyes it's so much more obvious that this thing called life is going so fast. And unless you are present in the moment, it's going to be done. Mm-hmm. It's going to be over. And what would we be left when that's done? Like, do I remember all that the checklists, the to-do list that I completed and then feel probably empty? Or would I remember the sparkles that you saw in your child's mm-hmm. eyes or you know the the texture of you know the the hugs that you you received from your child or the scent of the baby hair or you know like those like precious moments that were not on the to-do list mm-hmm. I, it's funny um my daughter is now 11 and she knows that i'm doing meditation and the podcast and she's really uh, the biggest fan of my podcast. She's always checking the stats and stuff. <laughs> the other day, for the really for the first time, we did the meditation together. I was not the facilitator. We listened into the uh, live stream of Dr. Joe Dispenza's mm-hmm. meditation. And we sat down, I think it was about 20 minutes to 30 minutes. And then she was really there. Mm-hmm. And after that was done, she told me, I feel like tingly in, in my stomach area. Then she went back to her room and then she came right out and then told me I was going to go back to my phone and check messages and stuff. But somehow I feel like it's not a good thing to do now. I'm going to just sit here. And since I'm hungry, I'm just going to eat something. <laughs> and I was like, wow, like. First of all, you felt physically felt tingly in your heart, tummy area. That's awesome. And you were able to kind of listen to your heart, whether like going back to the phone was a good thing at that time or not. And then you, you listened to your whisper and then came out of your room and, you know, selected something else, selected something that was going to serve you better. Yeah, that was mind-blowing in front of my eyes oh that is so amazing (laughs) that she like one meditation yeah of going deep within herself yeah she was able to be like wow that is so powerful that you shared that story with us because I I always wonder like how is this going to affect like I'm a meditator too Mm -hmm. and I always wonder how is that going to affect my son is he going to even be interested is it going to be something that could serve him and like you were saying like you've been on this journey for what you said two years ago you got your certification with the Mm -hmm. meditation and just now yeah she's like feeling the call to like okay I want to see what this is all about yeah 
if your parents told you that you have to meditate, you most likely won't. So I am, I have not been really forcing her to do any of the eternal work. And she's also 11, you know, (laughs) growing up, I felt like I was not allowed to do a lot of things I wanted to do. And that's something I don't want to do to my own child. Although my parents always had a good intention for me and my siblings, but I know how that affected me. So I just want her to want to do things and then try things and then see the benefits on her own instead of me telling her like, you should do this. It's amazing. I mean, I, I tell the story of, you know, the benefits, but I don't really force her to meditate with me. So having the guided meditation facilitated by somebody else was helpful rather than me, you know, walking her through. Oh, that's beautiful that you guys meditated together. That's yeah. like my dream, my vision. I'm like one day I got my <laughs> husband on board. Now I've got my mom on board. I'm like, who else can I get? Like, <laughs> join me. I think like one of the biggest takeaways, like there was so many goodness in this conversation, but the, one of the biggest takeaways is that we have the power within ourselves yes. to make a new choice. Yes, always. We might not feel that way. Most of my life, I didn't feel that way. I didn't feel empowered or anything. I felt like there was a template that I had to live according to. I also did not realize, like, I didn't know what template was. But there was something there that I had to, like, follow and live according to. But that template could be anything that you like. You can create the template. You can create the blueprint. And also, unless you create the template or blueprint of your life, you will most likely follow one of the existing templates that might not fit you. I tried to fit myself into all the existing templates. That didn't really work out that well. So I had to, I couldn't fit in. So I had to be pushed out. (laughs) I had to leave those templates. And that's like repeating the, the process over and over. Different situations, marriage, career, or like place to live, whatever that is, you can choose your, you can create your own template. Then you don't have to worry about if you fit in it or not, because you are creating it by yourself. Of course, it's going to fit perfectly. Also, the template can change over time. You know, you don't have to stick to this one idea of your ideal life. As your child grows, things will be different. You know, your desires would develop different desires or different plans, different business. It will evolve. Feeling like you have to stick to one type or one template will most likely be boring. And also like you will feel like restricted and it will show up in your body or mental or, you know, emotional health somehow as a stress or disease or any forms it's just telling you like hey like I don't this is not working for me (laughs) this is not for you it's yourself telling yourself you know like help like we need change yes so beautiful that we get to make the template of our lives like we get to change it we get to evolve with it we get to create it and it's like your journey definitely wasn't easy. It was like a hard journey and it took a lot of guts and it took a lot of bravery. It took a lot of courage for you to walk through all those valleys and all those moments in time that felt like it broke you down. Like you were saying to your lowest low Yeah. and keep searching and keep looking and keep finding and keep seeking. And so I think that's such an encouragement for the moms that are listening because the motherhood journey Mm -hmm. it's that journey of like are we doing it right (laughs) are we doing it right are we doing it right and feeling down and beating yourself up and yeah like and so getting back up and going again and getting back up and going again and creating and creating and yeah so that thank you so much for sharing with us today and I would love for the mamas listening to know how they can support you how they can celebrate you how they can like follow you on this amazing journey that you're on right now (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. So my podcast is called Why Not Meditate. It's available on anywhere, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere people listen to your podcast. My Instagram is where I am most active. It's masakozawa underscore photography. And I share my words in photography there. I believe that my love for drawing as a child now is 
applied to photography. And then there's a connection with meditation. I just recently like realized, you know, like you become better at anything through meditation. You know, you become a better mother, better partner, better human being overall, but also like as a photographer or artist, because you have to be connected within in order to express. I am just finding the uh, the connection between photography and meditation. And yes, you capture an image with a camera, but it's actually a reflection of who you are internally more than anything. You could be seeing the most beautiful scenery, but if there are 10 people taking a picture of that scenery, you will see 10 different, very different images, most likely. And that shows the photography or the image that you capture is not just a scenery. It is the internal landscaping that you have. It's just a reflection of your state of being at that moment. So I am developing a workshop to go over that information and share that with anybody who's interested. It's work in progress. Yeah, my next project. And that's how it starts. And I love how you're describing photography as it's it relates to your internal landscape and it's almost mm -hmm. like the word essence came to mind when mm -hmm. you were describing it's like your essence comes to mind when you're taking that photo 10 pictures at the same thing it's going to look completely different like the hype level like yeah. where they're taking it where they're yeah. like the perspective is so so that I think is a beautiful beautiful thing to explore and that workshop sounds amazing <laughs> and I am like go girl go <laughs> <laughs> do the thing and I would love it if you have anything on your heart that you feel like speaking to before mm. we go it could be about anything that we've talked about up to now or just whatever is on your heart I have gone through some hard things in life but I am so glad that I am not bitter about it I'm so glad that I am not using it to define who I am I don't know how I chose not to do it but I am very thankful for all the challenging things that I went through in life. So if you're going through anything hard or challenging in life, it's actually most likely a blessing in disguise. And just having that the thought process will make difference. And it's never too late to leave the place or situation or relationship that you know that's not for you. And it's scary. It's meant to be scary. It's okay if you're scared. But if you know in your heart it's not for you, then why not leave and then create something that works for you better? Oh, that is such an encouraging message. And somebody needed to hear that. So thank you for sharing that. And thank you so much for being here today and telling us your story. Thank you so much for having me and holding this space for me to share. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so filled with joy to have you here. If this show resonates with you, I have a gift for you. If you're feeling stuck, this freebie may be just what you need. I believe that if you know your why, it helps you get unstuck quicker. So to connect with your heart and know your why and figure out what it is that is most important to you, get the freebie. It's in the show notes. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast to get notifications each week. To support the show, you're invited to leave a tip in the tip jar. Information for all this is in the show notes. Sending love and light to the spirit listening to this today. Be blessed. <laughs>